Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Summer Seminar Series. My name is Eric Kenderson. I am a recent graduate from the School of Library and Information Science here at the University of Iowa. And today I'll be discussing Esther Walls and the role of a Black librarian. Esther Jean Walls was a Black librarian who sought social justice in her home state before starting a significant career with the New York Public Library and other prominent institutions, such as the Library of Congress. Her impact was not only felt in New York, where most of her professional career took place, but she also left an impression on Mason City, Iowa City, and overseas over the years by implementing community center activities, such as drum lessons, talks by Black authors like Langston Hughes, and writing workshops to foster new and progressive relationships to increase information literacy. Walls was an example of someone who had put others before herself. She had a passion for helping those that needed it. In the same breath, she pushed others to see the potential in themselves that she saw in them. This has to be one of my favorite photos from the Iowa Women's Archives. The book that Walls is holding La Vida by Oscar Lewis. It's a story of a Puerto Rican family that migrated or immigrated over to New York City. So Oscar Lewis was known for his theory, the culture of poverty. So in connecting this story of this Puerto Rican family to New York, Walls was trying to place a common ground for the citizens and understanding that their stories aren't very different from many, many other people's. Esther Walls was born to Eldis and Juliet Lewis Walls on May 1st, 1929. Her father was a cement worker and her mother was a housewife. She had one older sister, Madeline, born in 1924, who also became a librarian. According to the family, the Walls sisters' grandparents arrived in Northern Iowa around 1870. Walls raised her consciousness of Black history and culture through the library. In an oral history interview from 1986 preserved in the Iowa Women's Archives, she reported that, quote, as a youngster in Mason City, Iowa, I do remember my mother and my sister and myself frequently going to the library and coming home with the equivalent of a shopping cart full of books, end quote. She recalled that, quote, anything that we could read about the Black experience was something that was terribly important to us, end quote. From an early age, information literacy was a priority that progressed throughout Walls' life. Walls and her sister wanted to gain knowledge of a community and a culture they were disconnected from geographically, but still tied to. And the library was, quote, a bridge that connected us with what was going on in places where there were numbers of Black people, end quote. Mason City was the information environment in which Walls wanted to fulfill her personal goals of learning more about Black history and culture, a precursor to developing social consciousness and her academic success goals. Her love for books began at a young age and her drive to excel scholastically began to deepen in the seventh grade. Walls became determined to be Valley Victorian of her class, and she accomplished that goal. During her time as a librarian, these experiences of her younger years will push her to advocate for information literacy through programming targeted towards Harlem youth. One of the memories of her childhood she mentioned in the oral history interview was the Just Right Club, an all black women club her mother was a member of. Walls' mother and the other women of the group would tell the young women of the community, quote, you have to excel, you have to be someone, you have to work harder than anyone else does in order to achieve, end quote. That statement hits home. I was told those same things as a youngster, and I know countless other black children being told the same thing as well. Pushing through adversity as a child led her to become the leader that she rose to be later in life. Walls' academic achievement at the University of Iowa entwined success and first for Black women. Before transferring to the State University of Iowa, where she received her BA in 1948, Walls attended Mason City Junior College. At Iowa, she was the first Black woman 
to be elected to the Alpha of Iowa chapter of Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest and most prestigious undergraduate honors organization in the United States. Money was a critical factor in higher education for her. Walls ensured that she or her family would not have to pay a dime for her academic journey. Walls would achieve significant academic recognition at the University of Iowa. As for extracurricular activities, Walls sang in a jazz orchestra on campus. When she had let her mother know what she was doing, her mother told her not to pivot from her initial goals. She wanted her to be more than a norm and to reach new heights for young people of Iowa to inspire to be. As some of you may know from this photo, in 1946, Esther Walls, Virginia Harper, Leanne Howard, Gwen Davis, and Nancy Henry protested the segregated housing policy at the University of Iowa. Walls later recalled, quote, it seemed to be something so normal that should have happened. I had a right to be in Carrier Hall. Why not, end quote. Walls shared her credentials, which predicted the trajectory of her academic and professional achievements in the years ahead. Quote, I was a valid Victorian of my high school class, and I was from the state of Iowa, end quote. The commitment, focus, and determination involved in actions towards an issue so personal yet challenging as a young college student is wondrous yet daunting. In the interview, she does not detail her experience at the University of Iowa, nor does she mention the Carrier 5 incident. Although the event was foundational for her childhood, in the end, we know that it happened and the legacy that it carries today. While working at the Mason City Public Library after graduating from the University of Iowa in 1948 convinced Walls to become a professional librarian. Madeline also became a staff member at the Public Library and would spend 43 years in adult services in Mason City. Later in her career, Esther Walls recalled Linda Barrett, who hired her for her first library job as the person that eagerly took her in. Other comments on the first library position, however, revealed that her start was in fact conditional. Quote, in those times, they weren't hiring black people in any kind of jobs of that sort. But Barrett looked at my transcript and decided that I could work in the library. I started off as an apprentice and worked two months without pay whatsoever in the Mason City Public Library. After that, I became a regular staff member. Let's just let that digest and think about that. She worked for free to show her commitment, her focus and her dedication to her craft, her skill and what she wanted to do in life. How many of you think you can work your job currently for no pay for two months. There are other indications too in Walls's collections of her postgraduate years that, dis that despite having graduated with honors and have been admitted to a University of Iowa graduate program, she has still found many doors were closed to her as a black woman. Walls explained that the experience of working at the local public library was transformative. Quote, at the time it was just a job, but there grew in me a concern for putting people and books together, a deeper sense of public service, end quote. This brief period then was influential for Walls, giving her a sense of librarianship as a meaningful career and encouraging her to follow the profession her sister also chose. It was not long before Walls left the Midwest and moved to Manhattan to develop her career. From 1950 to 1965, she worked at the infamous New York Public Library, whose Harlem branch was associated with notable Black librarians and authors. The library branches at 135th and 136th Street served Harlem residents and those interested in Black life, history, and culture. When Walls started working at the branch, renamed in honor of Harlem Renaissance poet County Cullen in 1951, she became part of a library that would be described by the New York Times as circulating over 30,000 books and the neighbor to the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture with even more books, newspapers, and African language records, manuscripts, and manus microfilm. Simultaneously while working, she completed her library degree at Columbia University earning her degree in 1951. 
While learning about librarianship, she also learned about New York's Black culture through the people and materials she encountered. Working at the County Cullen Library, quote, was the thing that really opened up all kinds of horizons for me and made me understand in depth what the Black experience was all about, end quote. Walls' excitement and energy at being amid so many creators are evident in her words, photos from library programs, and her personal photos. For a time, she led the North Manhattan Library Project, a, quote, pilot project located in the Schomburg Collection and the County Cullen Regional Library to test the effectiveness of enriched, enriched library service and in a disadvantaged community, end quote. Her responsibilities included service to young people and adults. Walls' recollections indicate that Harlem community members responded enthusiastically to her as a Black woman, with one saying to her, quote, we're so glad you're here and we're so glad you're Black, end quote. It could have been that Walls' philosophy of service was to provide non-judgmental services and resources. Quote, we don't preach. We don't tell people what to do. But what we do is to introduce them to material that they need in order to live enriched lives and more constructive lives. I would like to believe that my presence in the Harlem community helps some young people and some of the young adults to perhaps at least dream a little bit. She valued community engagement and fostering a relationship with the patrons the library serves, particularly young people. Walls learned about trends in young adults' interests she attested in a speech for the New York College Department of Library Education, Genoso, that she, quote, read as many books on dating, hot rods, which meant cars, and space travel as she could, end quote. In a New York Times article, Wall stated, quote, Central Harlem is a transient area for people just up from the South, but there is a feeling of community here that you don't get anywhere else. We might be helping the daughter of a judge one moment and the son of a woman who just sent him over to get warm the next, end quote. Walls recalled that teens of color appreciated her willingness to meet them where they were and to expect them to make the best of their lives. Quote, something beautiful happened to me, a black librarian and them. They were proud of me as a black person who had achieved, end quote. Walls was asked to talk about her experience in Africa in the oral history interview. She shared an incredible story that could move a crowd. Her first experience going to Africa came with the help of a supervisor who suggested Walls visit. She explained to her that transportation alone at that time would be at least $1,000. The supervisor then said, okay. And the next day when Walls came into work, there was a check on her desk for $1,000. I don't know about y'all, but if somebody offered me a check of $1,000 to take a trip and then the next day they it was there, best believe I will be going the next day. But that is neither here nor there. Esther Wall shifted the consciousness of those from the same country, the same culture, and the same customs as herself. Her greatest challenge will be to expand the mindset of those from distant countries and cultures. While still working for the Franklin Book Project, a nonprofit organization dedicated to stimulating book and library programs in developing countries, she created an extensive reading list of African literature. It was called African Encounter, a selected bibliography of books, films, and other materials for promoting an understanding of Africa among young adults. This list was used by the American Library Association in several programs they held internationally. Further, she served on ALA's International Relations Roundtable and represented other divisions in leadership roles. She was appointed as director of the U.S. Secretariat to promote UNESCO's International Book Year in 1972. Within, Iowa's women, within the Iowa Women's Archives, in the Iowa Digital Library is a copy of the scrapbook from the International Book Year. You will find articles, photos, newsletters, and more within it. In addition, there is a speech titled People in Places where Walls remembers her life in her hometown of Mason City that she gave at the First United Methodist Church in Mason City in 1969. 
She articulated to the audience a consciousness of societal challenges. Quote, although I was given almost complete freedom and choice of topic, I could talk about the generation gap, about student unrest, about air pollution, about our materialistic society, end quote. At the end, she chose to voice her memoir, quote, so what I propose to do is to share with you all some of my own personal reflections and observations of a life which has been blessed by associations and situations which were enriching and unique, end quote. Knowing that she was in the church of her hometown, she had to be personal and moving with her words. She knew that she could talk about everything she's learned in life and the people that she's met. Therefore, talking about the place and the experiences that helped shape her into who she became was only fitting. She wanted to bring the audience into her world. She wanted them to understand her unique experience, her experience of being a Black woman from Iowa. Wall spent over 30 years as a librarian, and her related work with literacy and social issues resulted in an expansive professional career and a leadership profile. When she retired from the Sony, library systems in 1988 she had worked at multiple public and academic libraries as well as book and literacy oriented organizations and her final professional position as associate director of the libraries for the state university of new york at sony brook the mason city globe gazette recognized her as a noted and accomplished librarian Walls had not been had been recognized within Iowa rather than as a national leader because her materials are being held in a local archive rather than at a national library like the New York Public Library and the Library of Congress. Whether as a public librarian or as an international literacy ambassador, she wanted to understand the communities whose lives could have been improved by access to information and ideas. Her presence in a field that is historically white shows young black and brown children that they are a part of a larger community and that they can be more than the norm, which her mother wanted her to be. Public libraries are places where people go to socialize, to learn a new skill, or to simply read around other moving bodies. Fostering relationships with the community you serve shows them that you are invested in them wholeheartedly and not just for capital gain. As I begin to wrap up my presentation, I want to leave you with the activity. Now that you know more about Esther Walls and what she did for her community, think back to your personal education journey. Think back to the people that you experience and develop relationships with. Think back to the people who are responsible for educating you. Did they leave a lasting impression on you? Did they change your life for the better? This is how many of the young girls and boys felt when Esther Walls helped them, as if they were getting their lives changed for the better. She wanted to embed the love of books, knowledge, and learning in the minds of young people. She has stated, quote, the most fulfilling moment in her life came from traveling the world 24 times to promote reading to children of different countries, end quote. No matter the community or the status of the people, Walls wanted to make sure equity was being upheld. As a young man in this field, I truly appreciate the sacrifices made by Walls. Just the simple fact that her presence touched one person goes a long way. In closing, because obviously I love quotes, it only seemed right to end with one. Quote, yet yeah, I am emotionalizing, even in Iran. With no common racial background, I felt one with the people. But no, it was different in Africa. I kept seeing faces that made me think of a face at home, a face of an aunt or a cousin. And I found myself thinking, could this possibly be where I'm from? Might this be the tribe from which my mother's and father's ancestors were drawn? Thank you so much for listening. Have a good rest of your day.